Hello everybody, welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me Sally and we are in week four of five of Bake the Book. Now, what book? The Crumbs and Doilies book, of course. Now this is a little something that you guys started over on Instagram. Loads of you were baking one recipe a week from the book and we thought it was so cool. We wanted to join in on the fun. So each week this month, we are baking a recipe from the book. Last week was the tray bakes and you had Dane's infamous banana blondie. It was absolutely delicious. One of my faves, but not as much as this recipe is my fave. And today we're baking from the cookie chapter and we're making the ginger creams. This one here, also one of my favorite pictures in the book as well. It is super duper cute. Now I feel quite honored to be doing this recipe because this recipe came from Nikki's brain and Nikki is just over there watching me do this. So I'm a little bit nervous. I hope I get it right and I hope I do her proud. This cookie recipe is delicious. It is basically two ginger biscuits that are chewy, but also crispy thanks to the demerara sugar that is around them. Um, and then they're filled uh, with a lovely cream cheese icing, giving the perfect tang to the ginger biscuits. It is really easy to make. It's gonna take maybe, I don't know, maximum one hour out of your day. She first made them for her dad because he wasn't a cake fan. It was his birthday, so she made these biscuits and every time she brings them in, the C&D gang, are loving them and they scoff them all. So we're gonna start by getting this dough prepared and that all starts with some unsalted butter, which is soft. Of course, we go on about softened butter all the time. It's gotta be spreadable like this because we're gonna be mixing this with a hand whisk and unless you've got those big guns, it's gonna be hard work. Um, obviously mine are huge. <laughs> so I'm gonna start by putting 140 grams of softened unsalted butter into this large bowl along with some sugar. Now I've got 150 grams of soft light brown sugar that is the light colored stuff that is sticky and sweet. And this is gonna add a delicious caramelly flavor but it's also gonna help make these real chewy. So that's gonna go in with our butter. And then lastly at this stage, I've got 70 grams of golden syrup. And now if you can't find golden syrup and you're not able to get any online, then you can use corn syrup or even honey, but obviously honey does have quite a distinctive flavor and that might come through in your cookies, but honey's not gonna be bad with this combination of flavors. So anyway, let's get mixing. I've got my hand mixer here and we're gonna start mixing it on a medium to high speed until it's all come together as one dough. So after a couple of minutes, that's all come together, we're gonna add one egg. So I've got one medium egg here, and that's gonna go right on in, and we're gonna keep mixing again, just till this is combined. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh! <laughs> yes! So again, that really doesn't take long at all, just a minute or two, and now it is time to get our dry ingredients in, starting with 225 grams of plain flour. I'm putting it through a sieve, just because that's what you do, right? <laughs> and then we've got some spices and some raising agents. So I've got one and a half teaspoons of bicarbonate of soda, a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, and two teaspoons of both ground cinnamon and ground ginger. And those are gonna go right on top of the flour. And then we're gonna sift that through. And once it's sifted, I'm gonna grab my spatula and I'm gonna fold all of this together nice and gently until it's one stiff dough. Okay, so it's stiff, but it's quite sticky, and we need to roll these into balls with our little hands. So what we're gonna do now is just pop this in the fridge for 30 minutes to one hour, just for it to firm up a little bit. Alrighty, so dough has been in the fridge for about an hour, and it's gone really stiff, like, big old chunk like this, and so we can pull it apart with our hands and not get too sticky. So we need to weigh these because we want them all to be perfectly even once they've baked. So we're gonna do 20 gram balls, which might look small, but remember, we're gonna sandwich two cookies together. So once you've got your 20 grams rolled out, I'm gonna roll it between my hands. I've never been very good at doing this, getting a nice ball, but oh, okay. 
not too bad. Nice smooth ball here. And then the last thing we're going to do is drop it into this demerara sugar and just roll it around till it's completely coated and this is going to give it that really delicious crunchy exterior and then we'll just pop it onto a baking tray here now these are going to spread once they're in the oven so you do want to space them out pretty well so that it will stick together um, and it's going to make a lot as well because obviously we're going to be sandwiching so if you can't fit them all in your oven at once then do not worry, you can keep the dough in the fridge until you've freed up some baking trays. So that is 16 cookie balls, which is going to make eight sandwiches. And it was about half of the dough, so I'm just going to save that until these ones have baked. The oven is preheated to 170 degrees C, which is fan assisted. I'm just paying attention because I feel like these are going to roll everywhere. Slowly, slowly. And they're going to go on for 10 minutes. And we're just going to check that they're looking nice and golden and crispy on the outside. And in the meantime, we're going to make our buttercream filling. So this is going to be a nice cream cheese filling. It's nice and light and a little bit tangy. Um, it's going to go really wonderfully uh, with our gingery biscuit. So I'm starting with some more soft unsalted butter. This time I've just got 70 grams and it is very small, but we don't need that much. So it's going to go into this absolutely adorably cute tiny mixer, which is very appropriately named Lil Nikki. This is Nikki's recipe, so it's a win-win. We're going to start by just mixing this on its own, just for about a minute or two, just to break it up. Okay, so this, you can't really see. I'll scoop some out. It's looking a little bit kind of creamier and silkier. So now I'm gonna add my cream cheese. So I have got 115 grams of cream cheese and I've had this out of the fridge all morning so that it's at room temperature because you really want your butter and your cheese to be at the same temperature to stop one from making the other one go all hard. Um, and then you've got really sad, lumpy buttercream. <laughs> so I'm gonna chuck all of the cheese into the mixer with the butter along with just a little pinch of salt, and I mean a little one like this, and that's just gonna pull out the kind of tanginess from the cheese and just cut through a bit of that sweetness, and then we're just gonna get that mixing again on a medium to high speed for about two to three minutes. Now it is time to add in some icing sugar. So in total, I've got 395 grams of icing sugar, which I've already sifted. Um, always sift your icing sugar, because sometimes you buy it and it's got really, really hard lumps in there that you really have to break up. Before I put it back on the mixer, I'm actually just gonna mix this in a little bit by hand, because otherwise it's gonna go absolutely everywhere. And just don't wanna get too sticky today, you know? <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Pop it back on the mixer for another two to three minutes. And what you'll see with the cream cheese is that it's gonna go quite loose to begin with, but once we put the rest of the ice sugar in, it's gonna stiffen up. Kidoki icing is made. It's looking really whippy and smooth, and I know it's going to be light and fluffy because we've had it whipping for maybe almost 10 minutes. So now I'm just going to transfer it 
into this piping bag that I have fitted with, let me show you, a little round nozzle on the end there. If you've only got the large round nozzle, then don't worry, that will be absolutely fine. So, I've got my cookies here, they've all completely cooled down and they are ready to be filled. Before we do that, I'm just gonna turn half of them upside down. To fill our cookies, we're gonna pipe five splodges of the cream cheese buttercream from the outside of the cookie, swiping it into the center. Once all the cookies are filled, pop their lids on and give them a very gentle squish so that the icing squishes out to the edges of the cookies. And that is our little ginger creams finish. They look so beautiful and I just know this is gonna be delicious. Now it might go all of my, over my face because it's very soft. If you let these set a little bit, they'll be easy to eat, but I don't really care. You've seen me make a mess before. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Super crispy, thanks to our demerara sugar, but really, really chewy in the middle. The perfect cookie. And then having that cream cheese icing in the middle, gives a little like, sweet kick in the middle and it is absolutely delicious. You're never gonna wanna buy ginger creams from the store ever again once you have made these cookies. We've got one more week in the Bake the Book. It takes me a long time to get that in my head. Bake the Book series and that is next week when we all come together in holy matrimony <laughs> to build a cake from the cake chapter. It is going to be the raspberry and yuzu cake. It's an absolute cracker. So come back next week for Gemma, Dane and myself and we'll be making that cake. If you do make these, then make sure you tag us over on Instagram using hashtag crumbs and doilies book. I'm getting nods, that's the right one. <laughs> and of course, tag us at crumbs and doilies and at cupcake Gemma as well. And we'll see you next week. In the meantime, <sighs> Eat them, have a lovely time. I'm gonna eat all of these. Jerry's hanging out at the door to go home, but I know she's not leaving yet because she wants to have one of these cookies. So. <laughs> I better save her one, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see you next week. Bye.